Hello everyone, and welcome to another Fallout 76 character build. If you're looking for a specific section, there will be timestamps in the description, as well as a link to the Nukes Dragon page for the build as well. At the end of the video, I'll also be having a small update as to builds on this channel, so make sure to take a look at that section if you want to know what's going on with the channel as a whole. The recommended special I have for this build is 3 Strength, 11 Perception, 1 Endurance, 4 Charisma, 5 Intelligence, 5 Agility, and 6 Luck. This is by far the most flexible special recommendation I have ever given. Not only does it have room for 21 additional points, it also is somewhat subject to change depending on the drops you get. For perks, I'm going to be going through each stat with what I have recommended on here. I'll also be talking about possible changes you may wish to take due to the variable nature of this build. In strength, I've included the first rank of each version of Slugger. The main weapon choices for the build are somewhat specialised and can all break easily, so I wanted a more reliable weapon for if I got swarmed. In my case, I happen to have a decent 3-star pitchfork, so I figured I'd throw that onto the character as a backup. In Perception, I have the most perks, mostly due to having all the Rifleman cards maxed out. I had a trio of good legendary Black Powder rifles, so I wanted to make sure these were doing as much damage as possible. On a similar note, I included Tank Killer, giving my rifles armour piercing and a chance to stagger. The Perception perk which applies regardless of weapon drops is Concentrated Fire. That's is well worth using with Black Powder weapons. They're slow, clumsy, and have terrible iron sights, so why not use the aimbot instead? At a high perception, it doesn't take much to reach 95%, even on a headshot. I don't actually have any recommended endurance perks, so instead we move on to Charisma where I have Lone Wanderer. This perk is something I consider essential if you're playing solo, as it's just so powerful, knocking off a fifth of the damage you take. Obviously, if you're on a team, you will want to switch this out for any perk that boosts you and your team together. With Intelligence, I had Gunsmith maxed out. Black Powder weapons can break fairly fast, so anything you can do to slow down the rate at which they snap is needed. On a similar note, Weapon Artisan is a perk you want to equip whenever you repair your guns, in order to ensure they can last longer. Agility is a stat you may well end up raising higher than I had if you get more Black Powder pistols. As I only had a single legendary Black Powder Pistol, I only went for the first of each rank of the Gunslinger cards. If you have more pistols, then by all means boost this up. Additionally, I included Sneak and Covert Operative. Black Powder weapons have some of the highest base damage values in the game. For this reason, they are ideal weapons to land sneak attacks with. Sneak helps you get close enough to line up a shot whilst remaining hidden, and Covert Operative will boost the sneak attack multiplier. Finally, we move on to luck where I focused around VAT's combat and damage. Bloody Mess is a perk that's ideal for any build that uses weapons from multiple classes. Max this out and all your weapons gain plus 15% damage. That's nothing to sneer at. As for the VAT's pace perks, I figured Better Criticals, Psychopath and Grim Reaper Sprint were the ones to go for. Better Criticals provides 20% extra damage for any VAT's critical shots, Psychopath gives you a 5% chance to refill your critical meter on a kill, and Grim Reaper Sprint grants a 15% chance to restore all action points any time you get a kill. Considering how often a single shot lands a kill, these last two effects actually end up with a somewhat decent chance of them triggering, especially if you decide to invest multiple ranks in them. And that's it for my suggestions for perks with this build. However, do keep in mind they truly are suggestions. Depending on how much you use VATs and the equipment that drops, you may need to switch them up a bit. The focus of this build was on black powder weapons, so that's what makes up the majority of our arsenal. I had a single pistol and a trio of rifles, providing me with four different high damage single shot weapons. As each weapon takes a while to reload, you want to use them effectively. Try to ensure you're not missing shots, and be prepared to switch weapon rather than reload in order to save time. The variation of which black powder weapons you use relies primarily on the drops you get in the game. Ideally, you want to use legendary weapons, so there's a large amount of RNG on just how powerful your weapons will be. Additionally, I had myself a 3-star pitchfork, which was surprisingly strong. This isn't a critical part of the build, but I felt the weapon fit with the look of the build, and it provided a good backup for when all my guns needed to be reloaded and I was getting charged. As with all builds, the actual armour you're wearing will depend on what legendary drops you get. In the future, I will have builds with specific armour sets, but for now, let's just focus on the aesthetic. I had myself a Union uniform I was wearing with this build. As the Civil War soldier, you want to be dressed in Civil War attire. The side you choose is entirely down to you, but personally I preferred the look of this particular outfit. There are a fair few ways to use mutations to your advantage with this build. 
If you want to focus more on the sniper element of playing this character, then you could make good use of Chameleon, in order to turn invisible when standing still. This would be highly useful for first shot stealth, but as black powder weapons don't have silencers, would leave you vulnerable to any other enemies. Marsupial is a perk I've spoken about a fair bit for rifleman builds. The essential gist of this is to jump up to a high enough location where enemies struggle to hit you, and then shoot down at them from relative safety. Use the verticality of the game to keep yourself alive. The mutation I feel is most helpful for this build would be Speed Demon. Although the extra movement speed is a nice boost, it's the plus 20% reload speed that really makes a difference here. The faster you can reload your weapons, the faster you can get back into the fight. I primarily played this character almost as a sniper. The high damage and slow fire rate of black powder weapons means you want to be landing the first shot in each fight, and have plenty of time to reload afterwards. If facing down multiple enemies, learn to switch to another weapon instead of reloading. Last thing you want is to let your opponent wail away at your health whilst you slowly pack powder in your rifle. I often found myself instinctively switching to my pistol often firing my rifle, ready to follow up straight away with a VATS effective headshot. If worse comes to worst, be willing to switch to your backup melee weapon to fight off anyone who gets too close. Fighting against standard enemies shouldn't be too much of a struggle. With high damage weapons, they will normally go down in a shot or two, making combat nice and quick. The problem is when you come across particularly tanky enemies. Mylurk Queens and Scorch Beasts won't go down in just a few rounds, so you've got to be prepared for an extended fight. Find yourself a good place to duck behind and provide cover whilst you reload your guns. Fire them off in a fast volley and then get back into cover. Combat gets a strange blend of both slow and intense with this build, as there will be short moments where you deal staggering amounts of damage, which are rapidly followed by the slow process of reloading a half dozen archaic weapons. As these weapons have such a low fire rate, I highly advise using bats. I normally like to free aim, but these weapons have terrible sight, poor accuracy, and overall just can't be trusted. With that, however, they suddenly become a lot more accurate, as the game relies more on your high perception stat instead of the fact that the gun can barely shoot straight. The Civil War soldier grew up with a family that loved historical reenactment. His weekends were spent learning about the 1800s, and his holidays with various groups, recreating the fight for America. His time spent living in that period gave him a fascination with the politics of the time, spending much of his youth studying state laws and how they changed over the duration of time. His fascination on the subject led to him aspiring to become a local politician, and one day reside over all of West Virginia. His career as a politician was a fruitful one, but sadly short-lived. He made his way to the rank of senator, and was on track to become a part of the Senate in a few years when he turned 30. Nothing mixes up politics quite like nuclear war, and the promising politician found himself fleeing to the safety of Vault 76. Life inside of the vault was not as pleasant as he had been led to believe. It was supposed to be filled with the best and brightest of West Virginia society, but he couldn't help feel that a large number of the residents were here by mistake. The politician spent most of his days in the vault conversing with others in his own line of work. Despite the fact the government had suffered a devastating attack, they all believed that the whole system would be rebuilt, and that meant they needed to work out how things would be run. He personally felt it would be best to take a look back at the glory days of America, learn from the Founding Fathers how best to build up a country that had suffered such devastation. When he leaves the vault, he is looking to rebuild America in the way he believes it should be. To start off his journey, he will try and reach Prickett's Fort, before travelling more of the land and seeing just how the states can become united once more. And that's it for the build. As I said at the start of the video, there is a link to this build on the Nukes Dragon site in the description if you want an easy reference for it. If you are still sticking around, then I assume you want to know what my build update section is all about. I've had three months of making Fallout 76 builds so far, and I've learned a lot about the process through doing it. What I've learned more than anything though, is that really good builds take a long time to create, especially in this game where I'm having to constantly farm for legendaries and levels in order to get equipment that works for characters I have in mind. Due to all the time spent doing this, I'm rushing a bit with capturing footage, playtesting and writing scripts. This isn't something I'm a fan of. I want to be able to make sure my builds are made to the highest standard, and right now that's not the case. When I watch them back, there's always more points of improvement than I'm happy with, so I've decided I'm going to slow down the pace at which I release builds. I've been doing weekly builds for 12 weeks now, but that schedule will be no more after this one. Instead, I want to spend my time building up my side characters and focusing on just what the best builds I can make are. 
I also want to have time to work on other projects. Currently I'm spending the majority of my week focusing around character builds when there's a lot of other videos I want to make. By not restricting myself to a specific time frame for making builds, it will provide a lot more freedom and variety with the content I can create. For those of you who enjoy the builds, I want to let you know that there's nothing to worry about. I still will be making builds, just at a slower rate. If you're new to the channel as well and really enjoy the Fallout 76 builds, make sure to check out the previous ones I've made. There's a dozen of them currently on the channel, from a sadistic clown that loves explosions, to a shotgun wielding drifter, and the greatest video that has ever been made, The Patriot. Real talk, that one was really, really fun to do. And I'd also like to issue a small apology for my voice, if you can't tell, I'm ill right now. And I've flubbed this script so many times and had to re-record and edit it, and I do apologise, because regardless, the audio's still not going to be up to the tier I'd like, which is another reason I want to slow this down, because then I don't have to record scripts whilst ill and coughing all the time. Yay! Now we're on to the actual outro, so I want to thank all of you for watching. If you have enjoyed the video, do make sure to leave a like on it, if nothing else, just to balance the dislikes for any Fallout 76 video gets. Make sure you're subscribed and have notifications turned on if you want to see more of my content in the future. I've got something particularly special I'm hoping to have released in the next week or two, and do share the video with anyone looking for a build like this one. As always, thanks for watching. Sarge out.